The diagnostic criteria for monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, or MGOS, or monoclonal gammopathy, whatever we like to call it, uh, are as follows. You could uh, have presence of a monoclonal protein that should be less than three grams per deciliter. Uh, it should also uh, be uh, confirmed by a bone marrow biopsy showing less than 10% plasma cells by immunohistochemistry. Is that necessary, the bone marrow biopsy? It's not mandatory to say that the patient has the monoclonal gammopathy, but you run the risk if you have a monoclonal protein and you didn't check that the patient could have, say, 30% plasma cells. And now that would disqualify from the monoclonal gammopathy. That would roll into what the textbook refers to as a smoldering myeloma diagnosis for whatever that's worth. Yes. So the monoclonal gammopathy says no more than 10% or less than 10% specifically plasma cells in the bone marrow and less than three grams per deciliter uh, of the monoclonal protein in the blood. Uh, also the light chains are part of it. So if the serum free light chains are, are more than 100 would also disqualify if the ratio is more than 100 disqualify for monoclonal gammopathy because that's part of the myeloma criteria. So you need to check if you want to rule out, you need to check the serum protein electrophoresis, immunofixation, and serum free light chain, and do a bone marrow biopsy. And you also need to run additional testing in the blood. You need to do CBC, you need to do a, a comprehensive panel, because if the patient has anemia, uh, that could make it multiple myeloma. And specifically, yeah. sp specifically, the hemoglobin, if it's 10 or less, uh, or if it's two units or lower than the l l lower level of, of normal at the lab, that by the book would make it myeloma, unless there is another attribution to the anemia if you're bleeding or some other reason. Renal failure you mentioned, so if the uh, creatinine is uh, over the threshold or if the uh, estimated glomerular filtration rate goes under 40, that would also be multiple myeloma. And then uh, the comprehensive panel, if you see evidence of hypocalcemia, so those are the blood-based tests and, and the imaging then to rule out the lytic lesions. So we used to have this so-called CRAB. The CRAB criteria. So yeah, yeah, yeah. hypercalcemia for C and R, renal failure, A for anemia, and B for bone lesions. Yeah, I never liked the acronym. It's kind of a little bit old school. Uh, so no X-ray, but you should do a PET-CT or an MRI without contrast to rule out the bone lesions. And then the additional new criteria or variables in the new criteria from 2014 and onwards is the light chain ratio over 100 would make it myeloma uh, using the binding site assay uh, with a, that stipulated reference. And also, if you did an MRI uh, whole body, if you were to pick up two or more focal aggregates in the marrow or in the bone, that could also change it to myeloma. Yeah. So you can actually see in a small proportion of patients who have what you think is monoclonal gammopathy, that there are focal islands of cells that have already started to aggregate. And if you follow these patients, the majority of them will have myeloma within a year. So therefore, that's part of the criteria, if you have two or more of those. And then lastly, if your plasma cell uh, workup from the bone marrow shows 60% or more by immunohistochemistry, that would also make it uh, myeloma. So there are seven variables. And some of these are quite clinical, and I honestly do think probably in the coming future that would probably be more genomic-based tests that will replace a lot of these old-school crab and all that. <laughs> but we are not yet there. We are, we are working on it. We are working on it. Yeah. Well, that's been very helpful. That's very helpful. And understanding things like the free light assay has been helpful, too. I will have to keep these things in mind.